Welcome. You are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. Week 14, National Football League. This was a big matchup, at least for one of the teams involved in this football game, that being the Green Bay Packers. Packers hosting the Atlanta Falcons. They don't call it the frozen tundra for nothing. It was cold. It was snowy. It was Green Bay. And this was a game they had to have at 5-6-1. and one, They're at a crossroads in their season. If they want any shot at postseason play, they got to win the rest of their games. Mike McCarthy has already said as much. He knows the importance of this football game. And if they want to give Aaron Rodgers, because I was in the, the thinking of that. You just shut Aaron Rodgers down. You're done this season. There's no way you're going to win this division. You were slaughtered on Thursday on Thanksgiving against the Detroit Lions. There's no way you're going to make the postseason this year. J just let it go. Just forget about it and move on. That was my way of thinking. There's no way that you you send Aaron Rodgers out here potentially with a collarbone that's not 100% healthy. He's still dealing with pain, obviously. He didn't play last week, and he said the discomfort was the reason why he didn't give it a go. Or we go why, why even risk him? You're not going to make the postseason. But then some things change. Detroit loses. Chicago, you still got them at the end of the season. You already beat them once. Or, yeah. So, you, you feel like, actually, they beat you already in Green Bay. That was the game Rodgers went down. You still got to go to Chicago week 17. So, you still got a chance from that perspective. If Detroit has a meltdown, which is very, very possible, you could still win this division. It's not out of the realm of possibility. So if you're a Green Bay, you got to win out. And it starts with this game. And so Matt Flynn is going to have to come up huge. The running game is going to have to help him out. This defense is going to have to step up. And look, you're playing a 3-9 and nine Atlanta Falcons team that, for lack of a better term, has struggled this season. You can win this game at home if you're a Green Bay. Let's go to the board and break this one down. Packers. And Falcons. Falcons come into this game at three and nine. Packers come in at five, six, and one. Packers with an impressive opening drive dominated by Eddie Lacy, who caps it off with a one-yard TD run at seven to nothing. Eddie Lacy was dominant in his first half of the game, and he got injured. And it seems like he all, he runs so tough. He's always getting nicked up. He didn't come out of the half with the rest of the team. He stayed in in the locker room for evaluation, and then came back out later in. And, and picked right up where he left off. But he was dominant on that opening drive. It was all Eddie Lacy. It was the Eddie Lacy show to open up this game. And if you're the Falcons, that should have been priority number one in this game. Is stop Eddie Lacy. Look, if I'm going to lose this game, it's going to be because Matt Flynn beat me. Do exactly. The blueprint has been set for beating this version of the Green Bay Packers. The Detroit Lions gave you the blueprint on Thanksgiving. Load up the box. Dare the Packers to throw and see if they can. That, that's the easiest way to, to beat this Packers team. Force them to throw. And so on this opening possession, they did not do that. Eddie Lacy dominated it 7 to nothing. Falcons respond immediately with the 36-yard TD strike to Drew Davis at 7 off. So Falcons don't waste any time attacking this Green Bay defense that has been suspect ever since Aaron Rodgers went down. They tied up. On a Matt Ryan and Drew Davis strike, it's seven all. William Moore drills Matt Flynn, forces a fumble by, and, and it's recovered by the Falcons. Three plays later, Tony G is in the end zone on a two-yard TD grab. It's fourteen to seven. William Moore was never seen on his play. He comes from the blind side. They don't pick up the blitz, nor does Matt Flynn read blitz. He has no idea he's coming. He gets molly whopped from behind. The ball goes up in the air. It's a fumble or excuse me, ball goes down on the ground in a scrap. Falcons come up with the football three plays later. Tony Gonzalez is in the end zone, and Matt Ryan is finding him. It's 14-7 Atlanta. After taking a sack on third down on a promising drive, Packers settle for a 40-yard Mason Crosby field goal. It's now 14-10, so Packers staying close. They're in this ball game, but you've given the Falcons some confidence, and I'll tell you what. This Falcons team, despite the record, offensively, they're still a tough team to deal with. Now, defensively, they've got their issues. They're not a good defensive football team. But you give them some space and opportunity offensively, they'll still carve you up. And so uh, 
being down 14 to 10, it's a little dicey of a proposition if you are the Green Bay Packers at this point. Here's why. With 30 seconds left in the first half, one of the zaniest plays you'll ever see, Sean Witherspoon catches and returns a trip, a tip drill pick, 71 yards for a touchdown. Now, this is one of the wackiest plays you'll ever see. Just insane. Okay. And we've seen things like this happen before, but it's rare. Matt Flynn throws a pass. It goes, it, it goes off the foot of a Falcon defender. Okay? As it caroms off of his foot, it flies into the air. It looks like it hit the ground. No one's really thinking that this play is still alive. But Sean Willispoon catches it out of the air and he takes off. And it's funny because players do this all the time in the National Football League, so you really don't pay it a lot of attention. You know, guys all the time, ball is incomplete. It's on the ground. They pick it up. They run the other way. Whistles are blowing. Nobody's really paying them any attention. They do it all the time. So on this particular play, ball caroms off the foot uh, of Worrylow, the, the rookie linebacker for the Atlanta Falcons, caroms into the air. It looks like it hit the ground. Initially, I thought it hit the ground, too. I just like, oh, he's just taking off running. But he's running, and, and I see the officials running out of the sideline with him. That used, and I don't hear any whistles. So that means that this play is live. I see a Packer defender try to come up and grab him, an offensive lineman. He cuts inside, and look, Sean Witherspoon was gassed. He was looking for somewhere to lay down. Someone, please come and tackle me. Please. I mean, he was even thinking, of, he contemplated lateraling this football but he ended up holding on. He zigged, he zagged, he got some blockers, he got some help, he got into the end zone on a 71-yard touchdown on an interception return. Again, one of the zaniest plays you'll ever see. But at this point now, it's 21-10 to 10 going into the half. I thought the Packers had lost this game. Again, you're asking them to score a couple of times without the Falcons scoring. Just, it, I didn't see it happen. I mean, this Packers team has struggled to put up points in the absence of Aaron Rodgers. Didn't think today or in this game would be any different. Green Bay gets on the board in the second half with the field goal off the strength of a Jordy Nelson deep ball. It's 21-13. to 13. Packers add another field goal at the end of the third quarter to make it 21-16. to 16. So they're hanging around. The defense is doing their job. It's a five-point lead, so it's been cut to a one-possession score. If you're the Packers now, you just need something to happen. You need a big play in your favor to really give you a chance in this game. And here it is. Mike Neal forces a fumble of Matt Ryan, recovered by Johnny Jolly, leads to an Andrew Corliss go-ahead score, failed two-point conversion. It's 22-21. to 21. So this was the play that they needed. This is the play they were looking for. Mike Neal comes, and he hits uh, Matt Ryan as he's trying to throw the football. Ball goes up into the air. It's brought down by Johnny Jolly, recovered. Three plays later, Packers get in the end zone, and uh, Andrew Corliss catches the football. They go for two. They try to throw it to Jordy Nelson on a back shoulder fade. But Flynn airmails it by about five yards over his head. But it's a 22-21 to 21 game. Even after the Packers had come back and taken the lead, I still thought they would lose this game. I said, Matt Ryan, if nothing else, is going to take his team down the field and get a field goal. But... Matt Bryant misses a 52-yard field goal. And on that particular possession, I thought that Sam Shields may have gotten away with the pass interference on second down. I really thought he mugged Roddy White on that play. They got away with one. That's fine. But on the next play, it was the perfect play call. The Packers come on an all-out blitz. And the Falcons have a wide receiver screen dialed up. And I tell you what, if they connect on this, it's a touchdown. It's a walk-in touchdown, and they win this football game. Instead, Matt Ryan, hurried by the pressure, throws off his back foot. It's inaccurate. Harry Douglas isn't able to corral the football. They have to settle for that 52-yard field goal, and he ultimately misses. That, to me, was the turning point of the game. Now, Falcons did get down the field again. They got all the way down deep into Packers territory. Kind of on that fringe of a field goal again. They would have been in that 50-something yard range. They didn't want to go down that route again. So they went forward on fourth down. And it wasn't fourth and a lot. It was fourth and in a, in a, short, about fourth and five or so. And they throw it out to Tony Gonzalez. And Matt Ryan is slightly off. They're not able to connect on the play. Turnover on downs. Falcons get one last-ditch effort after they get another stop of the Packers. 
but not able to get the necessary yardage to get in the field goal range. I thought for a second that Matt Ryan was going to pull a little bit of magic out of his hat, but he wasn't able to do that. As the Green Bay Packers at home hold on and get it done 22-21, to huge win. They go to 6-6-1 six, six, and one on the season, gives them a chance to stay relevant in that NFC North uh, divisional race. Again, they need some more help, and they need help. But again, with the Lions playing the way that they're playing, they're playing some really skittish football. And the Bears kind of iffy. You know, when they're on, they're on. But when they're not, they're not. And so this Packers team is alive and well. And if Rodgers comes back, there's been talk and speculation that he may be able to play this week against Dallas. That could be a huge boost. Well, that could be a, a detriment to this team if he's not ready to go either way. You got a shot. That's all you can ask for. You're in the middle of December, and you got a shot. Let's see what you do with it as you got a big one on the road against the Dallas Cowboys who need it just as bad as you do in order to win their division. So that's going to be a big matchup. But you took care of business at home in the snow against a 3-9 and nine football team that is now 3-10 and 10 in the Atlanta Falcons. Valiant effort by the Falcons, but again, there are no consolation prizes for playing hard, even though you're a bad football team. You don't get a juice cup, and everyone doesn't get a trophy at the end. You don't get a bag of chips and a juice cup for participating. You either win the game or you don't. The Falcons weren't able to do that, and so uh, you don't get a juice box here. There's no consolation prize for almost winning. You had 21 points at halftime. You have 21 points at the end of the game. That's a problem. You weren't able to muster any offense. You weren't able to put any more points on the scoreboard. Just a field goal in the second half wins you this game. You couldn't even do that. And so you fall to 3-10 and 10 on the season. Packers go to 6-6-1 six, six and one with a huge victory. Much needed. Now they're still in the hunt in the NFC North. That's going to do it for this installment of In the Lab Room. I thank you for joining me. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here in the Lab Room. Thank you for joining me. I've got two more games to break down in week number 14 of the National Football League.